Our next speaker is Chelsea Wilburn. Uh, she's also a student at AAEC High School. Her, her topic is Once More from the Beginning, Star Edition. Hi everybody, my name is Chelsea Wilburn and I'll be presenting to you Star Formation today. Thank you for coming out to the 22nd Annual Mancini Science Symposium. It means a lot to all of us. Today, I will be covering nebulae, population classification, an HR diagram, and the actual process of star formation. All right, nebulae. Nebulae were actually first seen in 150 AD by Ptolemy. He made a reference to it in his many findings. The next uh, discovery was by Nicolas Claude Ferbi de Peresque, and that was in 1610, and Johann Baptiste Sysat in 1618. They were both used with, they were both found using a telescope, and they were discovering the Orion Nebula. This is very impressive seeing as how the technology back then was very underdeveloped and they were discovered so close together because the uh, collaboration in that time was almost none. The man who was actually credited with finding the Orion Nebula is Christian Huygens in 1659, which is 50 years later. That may seem a little messed up, but he was the first to actually publish a detailed finding, and that's why. So diffuse nebula are the nebulae that actually produce stars, and that is because they're gaseous, and they have the perfect environment for actually making stars. Next is population classification of stars. This is a way to classify stars depending on what they're made of. Population one stars are very metal rich, which means that the materials used to make them were, have been recycled many times, which means a star was made, exploded, and then the materials from that exploded star were then turned into a star again. A population two star is a metal poor star, and that is basically probably like a second star one star probably was made, exploded, and then this is the one right after that. So there's only things such as really hydrogen, helium, lithium, and a tiny bit of higher elements. Population three stars is actually a new class that they decided to define because they were finding many stars with our newer technology that were made with elements and materials that were present from the Big Bang which means that it is completely unrecycled material. A HR diagram actually stands for Hertzsprung and Russell, and that is because there were, a Hertzsprung and Russell diagram is actually two diagrams put together because one used to only classify using luminosity, which is on the right, and the other used temperature, which is on the bottom. A Hertzsprung and Russell diagram uses both luminosity and surface temperature to efficiently, or efficiently diagram stars. And this is made so that way you can tell if a star is in a normal stage of life or not. All right, now to the good stuff. Star the process of star formation. Star formation starts by a tidal force in the universe. Now this can be caused by a number of things, a supernova explosion, or just the regular ebb and flow of the universe itself. What happens is particles in a diffuse nebulae bump into each other with enough force that when they bump into each other, they actually create a gravitational pull. When that happens, those two particles end up pulling in more particles to themselves, 
When this happens, things start to heat up and they start to get much, much bigger. This is called a protostar, and this is basically like a baby star. Uh, as this happens, a protostar will actually flatten into a disk, and then things called jets fly out because there is an energy surplus as the star is heating up and getting more particles and growing and growing. As it starts to get bigger and the jets fly out, a fusion occurs, nuclear fusion occurs, turning hydrogen into helium. As this happens, the star will stabilize and also the temperature of the star will stabilize. And now it is officially a star because it can uh, fuse on its own and make its own energy and heat, which is why stars are so bright. Uh, it can actually take anywhere from one to 50 million years to become particle to full-on star. And NASA says a star like our sun took about 50 million years to form. Another thing that's important are star clusters. In diffuse nebula, obviously, it's a, basically like a giant cloud in space filled with giant well, it's filled with lots and lots of gas and materials. So obviously, just one star doesn't come out of one nebula. There's actually lots of pockets in the nebula where stars form. So there can be hundreds of stars that will form out of one nebula. And these are called star clusters, and usually they all form at around the same time. There's globular clusters, which are tightly packed, and those tend to be older. And there's open clusters, which are kind of self-explanatory. They're more open and they're less tightly packed. And those tend to be younger. Today, we have covered nebulae, population classification, the atri diagram, star formation. And that's it. Does anybody have any questions? No questions? Oh. Yeah. So the question was, in population three stars, I said that there were recycled materials used to form those stars. And so I was asked to elaborate. Basically, what that means is, uh, what happens when, in a star, is let's say it came from population two stars. It would be made with pretty new, a lot newer materials like lithium, hydrogen, and helium. And those, so um, helium in the core of a star is where the nuclear fusion is happening and that's where the energy comes from. So when, most of the time, it's hydrogen fusing to helium in a nuclear reaction. But after the star starts to get older, a, it runs out of hydrogen to fuse to make its own energy. And so it will start fusing helium into carbon and then into other things like iron, gold, stuff like that. And so a population three star is made with high, heavier elements such as carbon, lithium, iron, things of that nature. Are there any other questions? Nope. All right, thank you very much for coming.